tell me what hospice is. It's a place where you go to die. It's not a good thing. Hospice? No, I don't. Hospice care? Um, I heard of it, but I'm not really familiar with it. If you have nowhere to go and you've been really, really injured and you're pretty much just waiting to die and you have nowhere else to go. Oh, to me, hospice has been a miracle, actually. They've been there, they've helped me physically, emotionally, all with all my aspects of life. My experience with hospice was a misconception. I thought it was just for people passing with cancer. I don't know why I thought that. That's all I ever heard. I didn't realize it was anything to do with palliative care, the end time care of a person. In the beginning, we selected San Gray de Cristo Hospice because of my mother. I talked to my mom about it, and she said, I know one thing, that you need help. Well, the most important thing that uh, uh, San Gray de Cristo Hospice did was giving me the time off. You know, my mom, she was thrilled when San Gray de Cristo Hospice came in. It gave her a little different outlet. People would come in, especially the volunteers, and she had somebody different to talk to. Uh, the CNA at that time, my mom and this gal, they kidded each other. They had the most fun. So I, I know my mom was very pleased and very happy to have them. I just don't know how anybody could not want San Gray de Custo Hospice in time of need. When my father was diagnosed, um, he was stage four. He was in stage. Um, hospice was the appropriate referral for him. The benefits that we saw for my dad were he was able to come home. Um, he didn't want to die in a hospital. He wanted to be at home with my mom, my brother, and my sister, myself, and all his grandkids. My expectations were high, and they met every one of those expectations with the compassion, with care, with dignity. Um, they just took really good care of my dad. You know, they listened. They provided spiritual support for not only him, but for his kids and his wife. And they also sent people out daily to help my mom with, you know, normal, everyday kind of things that you really can't do when you're taking care of someone who's into life. And they were a shoulder to cry on. With them taking on that responsibility, that gave us more time to sit with him and spend really good quality time. And we didn't have to worry about, well, did he get this? Did he do his medication? What, you know, did you do that? We had someone else who was able to take that, take care of that for us, and we spent more time with him. What they helped us do was, when my daddy was still in the hospital, he wanted to go home and he wanted to be in his home and see the sunrise. And when he got home on Saturday morning, he was able to see the sunrise on Saturday morning, and that's what he wanted. And he died two days later. My son had been diagnosed terminal, and in the four months since I received the diagnosis, I was just struggling. The most important thing um, that they offer to the whole family unit is support. The courage to have the conversations that you never imagined you would have to have. Our physician, Dr. Sloan, is absolutely a phone call away. And the first time he walked into the home and sat on the edge of the bed with me, as we were trying to figure out how to make Ryan comfortable, I was so relieved to know that I wasn't by myself. And Ryan was so relieved when he looked up and said, Dr. Sloan, hi. And they're there. It's, it's a family that you didn't know you had. The whole team actually I, I'm with, they've been a huge blessing just by being there, by helping me, helping me and my family deal with it deal with the reality that I'm facing. You can't run away from it. <laughs> you have to face it. But just know that there is hope. They're not closing a chapter. They're helping you walk to the next chapter. If it hadn't been for San Greta Cristo Hospice, I don't know if I could have made it. And I don't know if I could have kept my mom at home as long as I did. It saved me, basically. It wasn't just business, it was really caring for us as a family. They didn't know us. They didn't know who my dad was. They didn't know who I was. The care and concern of the staff, and I, I was just in shock, simply because that doesn't happen in other facilities. When, you're, when you need to make that phone call, make it. Don't be afraid. When you're, if you're a patient in hospice, or your family in hospice seeing this, don't be afraid. You have to know that hospice is hope. 
how that mindset that hospice is hope. I think it's a benefit because we can even use it with you know children and teens whose loved one is you know recently diagnosed with a terminal illness or you know maybe it's a change maybe they're now in a nursing home and they've lived with the family or maybe they are living with the family now and so just different way to reach out to children and teens instead of you know just sitting one-to-one -one across a table what do you think is their power what makes them go well, there's a, an old saying, and I'm not sure if I have this totally right, but I think it was attributed to Will Rogers that the outside of a horse is good for the inside of a, of a man and uh, a boy, girl, kid. Uh, and there's just something about it that's hard to explain that working with an animal like this helps open up things inside of a person emotionally. Tell us about the emotion that you picked up. I picked a blank one because I don't really know what to feel. Okay. Um, my grandpa died. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know what to feel. They can tell the horse anything and when they leave here, it's they've relieved themselves of those feelings and they may still have them, but it can be a way for them to release, you know, whatever emotions they came with today. People have been maybe in traditional therapy for six months and then one equine session just start pouring out things that the therapist couldn't get out in six months in a regular therapy. And it's not that the therapist was bad, it's just the horses are so good. <laughs> Thank God for the blessing of longevity. Right? The Old Testament longevity was a sign of God's grace and His blessings. So I would say that uh, the, the good life, my friend. <laughs> Praise God. One of the greatest uh, gifts that we have uh, and one of the most beautiful works of charity uh, is to be able to accompany someone uh, to the home of the Father. and. Um, and to have a place that with, with care, with love, uh, with dignity uh, tries to do just that uh, is a real blessing, it's a real grace. Never thought I'd see the day. And like I told my daughters, that guys would turn over in their grave if they'd see that. I never expected that. And let us now pray the words that Jesus taught us that reminds us that we have a loving Father who holds us in the palm of His hands. Oh. It was a privilege, uh, and I, I know that it meant a lot to my dad. And I, don't, I know that not too many people get that. And I was just really happy that they did go, because it made him happy. To have uh, this available uh, in, a, in a very special way, cooperating with the doctors, and you know, and giving the families uh, a sense of, um, you know, uh, that their loved ones are, are truly being cared for in a, in a very unique way because, you know, at, at the moment of, of uh, this moment, moment of life, there's unique uh, needs and to, so, so to have that is, is a real grace. Uh. Well, for me, I would say it's not even one or two instances because every day the care is there and anything that's needed is done. We, we, we respect the sanctity of life from the moment of conception in the womb to the moment that the Lord calls us to Himself. And, uh, and hospice and uh, the medical uh, field and, and uh, uh, the church, all of us have a responsibility to one another uh, to, uh, to, to uh, keep that in mind and to uh, to uh, safeguard that.